So we're just going to we're going to solve a bunch of equations today. That's the goal of today's lesson. Again, if you have a hard time seeing uh, what we're doing, I would click on uh, my screen and hit the little pin so it blows everything up. That way you can see it better. I have awful eyes and I'm sure a few of you do too. A few of you have already done that, but again, click on my box and uh, hit the pin and then that will allow you to zoom up on me. Is X all by itself? Nope. I have three multiplied to X. How do I get rid of a three if it's being multiplied to X? The opposite. Divide everything by three, divide everything by three, cross that out. X equals negative nine divided by positive three is negative three. Is X all by itself now? Mm-hmm. Done. So one stepper, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Is Y all by itself? No. Divided by 8 is in the way. How do I get rid of a divided by 8? Do the opposite of divided by 8. Multiply 8, of course. I'm going to multiply both sides by 8. Cross U out. Y equals 2 times 8 is 16. Is Y all by itself now? Mm-hmm. Dunzo, baby. Let's get, let's get purple up in here. Let's get purple up in here. I have two purples. Let's go with the nice magenta first. Uh, is R all by itself? No. What's in the way? Minus 8. How do I get rid of a minus 8? Do the opposite of minus 8 and add 8, of course. Add 8, of course. Cross U out. R equals 12 plus 8, which is 20. Is R all by itself now? Mm-hmm. These one-steppers. I have two-thirds multiplied to W. Well, usually when I get rid of something that's being multiplied, I divide. But... Instead of dividing a fraction, multiply the reciprocal. Instead of dividing a fraction, multiply the reciprocal. Instead of dividing a fraction, multiply the reciprocal. I have two-thirds attached to W. The reciprocal is 3 over 2. So I'm going to multiply everything by 3 over 2. I'm going to pretend that 9 is 9 over 1. So I just multiply straight across the top. 9 times 3 is 27. And straight across the bottom, 1 times 2 is 2. Can I simplify 27 over 2? Nope. So that's that. Okay. Those four problems were two-step equations. They were two-step equations because they required uh, two steps to do it. Let's complicate things, shall we? Problem five. Ooh, a two-stepper. Is D all by itself? No. What's in the way? I have a two attached to D and a minus one floating around. Which one should I get rid of first? The thing that's floating around. You're floating around, so I'm going to do the opposite of you. Add one, add one, cross you out. So I'm going to drop down 2D equals 6. Is D all by itself now? No. What's in the way? Times 2. How do I get rid of times? Divide 2. Divide everything by 2. And D equals 3. Is D all by itself? Mm-hmm. C over negative 6 plus 4. I have over negative 6 in the way, and I have plus 4 in the way. 
The plus four is floating around. Always get rid of the guy that's floating around, the thing that you could just subtract or add to both sides. Since this is plus four, I'm going to minus four from both sides, minus four, cross you out. C over negative six comes along for the ride, equals two minus four, small number minus a big number means I subtract the numbers and keep it negative. Is C all by itself now? No. What's in the way? Divided by 6. How do I get rid of a divided by 6? Multiply both sides by negative 6. Cross U out. Drop down the C equals negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12. Is C all by itself? Mm-hmm. Okay, those are pretty basic problems. Pretty not so bad. Let's complicate them. Problem seven, let's make it worse. Problem seven. Problem seven. Is A all by itself? No, I have a one third attached to A and I have a four floating around. Get rid of the plus 4 because it's just floating around by doing the opposite of plus 4. Minus 4, minus 4, cross U out. Drop down the 1 third A, you're now gone, equals 8 minus 4. Is A all by itself? No. I have 1 third multiplied to A. I could divide both sides by 1 third, but... Instead of dividing the fraction, multiply the reciprocal. Instead of dividing a fraction, multiply the reciprocal. I'm going to multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 1 over 3, which is 3 over 1. But 3 over 1 is just 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 3. A equals 12. A is now by itself. It equals 12. Dunzo, funzo. Oh, look, I have a 2B next to a 4B. Let's combine them. Two bananas plus four bananas is six bananas. Minus one equals five. Is B all by itself? No. What is in the way? Six is being multiplied. Six is attached to B. And I have minus one floating around. Let's get rid of the minus one that's floating around by doing the opposite of minus one, which is plus one plus one, cross U out. 6B equals six. Is B all by itself? No, what is in the way times six? So why don't I divide everything by six, divide everything by six, cross U out. And six divided by six is uno. Ew, fractions. Well, let's use common sense. I have uh, a delicious eggplant, <laughs> and I chop it up into thirds. I chop it up into three parts, and I have one of the parts, and I'm going to add two more of the parts. So if I add one third plus two thirds, that's three thirds. Well, wait a minute. I don't need that. Three-thirds is just one, so I get E. I get my whole eggplant. So if I cut my eggplant into three pieces, and I attach one of those pieces to two pieces, I have three out of my three pieces. I have my whole eggplant, and that equals eight. That was simple. Problem 10. Negative two attached to a parenthesis. Ah, distributed property. Multiply negative two to F and also multiply negative two to negative one. Negative two times F is negative two F. Negative two times negative one. Negative times a negative is a positive. Negative two times negative one then is positive two and that's going to equal six. 
Is F all by itself? No. What is in the way? I have a positive 2 floating around and a negative 2 multiplied to F. I have to get rid of the positive 2 that's floating around first. And the way I do that is I subtract 2 from both sides. Minus 2, minus 2, cross U out. Drop down the negative 2, F equals 4. Is F all by itself? No. What is in the way? Negative 2. Negative 2 is being multiplied to F, so when I divide everything by negative 2, divide everything by negative 2 and cross you out, F equals 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2, cross you out, not cross you out, circle you, and then that one is done. How about problem 11? Oh, gross problem 11. I have variables on both sides of the equal sign. So this is different than when I had problem 8. I had variables right next to each other in problem 8. So when they were right next to each other, I combined like terms. Here, though, I have problems on different sides of the equal sign. So I don't just say, oh, uh, if two gorillas and four gorillas is six gorillas. No, they're on different sides. So when they're on different sides of the equal sign, you take a look at your smallest g, which is 2g, and you get rid of it by doing whatever you have to do. I have positive 2g. I'm going to subtract 2g from both sides, minus 2g, minus 2g. Drop down the 1. 4g minus 2g is 2g, and then minus 11. Notice that when I subtracted 2g from both sides, I put minus 2g under the 4g, because those are terms that do combine. Now I'm left with a two-step equation. I'm going to add 11 to both sides because it's just floating around on the right here, cross u out. 1 plus 11 is 12. That equals 2g. I have 2 being multiplied to g, so I'm going to divide everything by 2. Divide everything by 2. Cross u out. 12 divided by 2 is 6, so 6 equals g. But I hate the way that looks. I hate it. So I'm just going to say g equals 6. G. What a hard problem. <laughs> 12. Mm. Variables on both sides of the equal sign again. Not on the same side, on different sides. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I have an H, 4H over here, and I have a negative 3H. I'm going to get rid of the smaller one by doing the opposite. That's negative 3H. I'm going to add 3H. I'm going to add 3H and cross U out. 4Hs plus 3Hs is 7H. Minus 21 equals, and the whole right side disappeared. So it's going to equal zero. Don't think you did it wrong. You didn't. You're allowed to get zero every now and then. It is a number. Is H all by itself? No. What's in the way? I have 7 attached to H, and I have negative 21 floating around. Let's get rid of the negative 21 floating around by adding mm, 21 to both sides. 7h equals 0 plus 21, which is 21. Is h all by itself? No. What is in the way? 7 is being multiplied to h. So I'm going to divide everything by 7. Divide everything by uh, 7. h equals 3. And that's it. Too easy. More. More.
more. Let's do more. We'll do four more. And they'll be rough. But that's okay. Uh, I have distributed property on the left. Distributed property on the left. 2 times 7 is 14. 2 times negative 4j is minus 8j. And that's the left side. On the right side, I have 6. And I have minus 8j. Huh. On the left side, I have minus 8j. And on the right side, I have minus 8j. Uh, they're the same. So if I added 8j to both sides, they'll both disappear. And that leaves me with 14 on the left and 6 on the right. So my variables disappeared, and I got 14 equals 6. Does 14 equal 6? <gasps> no! Then my answer is no solution. Remember, when the variables disappear and I get two numbers that don't equal each other, the answer is no solution. Hmm. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6k. And negative 3 times negative 4 is positive 12. Alright. Equals 6 times 2 is 12. And 6 times negative k is negative 6k. Hmm. So in the words of Britney Spears, oops, I did it again. I have a negative 6K on the left and a negative 6K on the right. Those are the same. So I know that those are going to disappear. So let me just show my work anyway, because I have time. Those will both disappear. And what drops down on the left is 12. And what drops down on the right is 12. Does 12 equal 12? Yes. So in the previous problem, when I had two numbers that didn't equal each other, I had a no solution. Well, when my variables disappear and they do equal each other, that's the infinite solutions. So I thought these problems would be so bad, but Eminem once reminded us it's not so bad. It's not so bad at all. Thank you, Eminem, for the gift of music. Two more, and then we're going to call it a day. Problem 15. Oh, nuts. Solve for y. I have two variables, though. I have a y and an x. So it looks like that my answer is going to have two different letters as part of the answer. That's okay. You're allowed to have that. So when I'm supposed to get y all by itself, I have to remove everything from y. Is y all alone? No. There's nothing attached to y, but I have a minus 3x just floating around. So I'm going to do the opposite of minus 3x, which is just floating around, and I'm going to add 3x. I'm going to add 3x and cross u out. And on the left side, I have y equals, and so now y is all alone. Do 3x and 6 combine? No, because one has a variable and the other one doesn't. So I'm going to write out, I always like writing out the thing with the x first. I'm going to write out 3x, and then since that's positive 6, I'm going to write out plus 6. Is y all by itself now? Sure is. So am I done? Sure am. From 16. Same rules solve for y. Is y all by itself? No, not even close. I have negative 2 attached to y, and I have 5x just floating around. Which one do I get rid of first? The negative 2 that's attached or the 5x that's floating around? Always get rid of the guy that's floating around and do the opposite. 
minus 5x minus 5x cross u out. I'm going to drop down the minus 2y. That part's gone. That's going to equal. Do 8 minus 5x combine? No, because one has a variable and the other one doesn't. So I'm going to write out my x part first, minus 5x. And since that's positive 8, I'm going to put plus 8. Is y all by itself now? No. Negative 2 is being multiplied to y. So let me say that again because maybe that cut off when my I was out of camera range. I apologize. Is y all by itself? No. Negative 2 is attached to y. How do I get rid of the negative 2 that's attached to y? Divide everything, everything, everything by negative 2. Everything. Y equals negative 5 divided by negative 2. Negative divided by negative is a positive. Do 5 over 2 simplify? Nope. So negative 5 over negative 2 is positive 5 over positive 2, and then x comes along for the ride. 8 divided by negative 2 is negative, and 8 divided by 2 is 4. Is y all by itself now? Yerp. Am I done? Yerp. So that's just the math. No word problems, nothing crazy. That's just the math side of these problems.